stress or stress management that's how broadly we call it or briefly we call it and uh, as i told you this is the topic which is uh, most uh, uh, demanding for various questions it raises and then uh, it also has very harmful effects as i told you on the health of the people so when companies are spending huge money on helping employees cope with stress they are spending money on uh, various coping mechanisms like yoga meditation calisthenics then uh, zumba then uh, early morning what you call those uh, uh, gym exercises and then what not they are coming out with varieties of uh, uh, coping mechanisms we will address them at the end of this class so otherwise what we will do we'll slowly get into uh, this subject with an overview like this first what we will do we'll have a thorough understanding of the concept of stress then we'll try to see what are the sources of stress then uh, what are the challenges of stress like what kind of problems people experience with stress and then finally we'll talk about how to cope with it that's an important aspect so i have my own personal experiences uh, because even today i work 16 hours a day so naturally i am stressed out at the same time how could i manage myself when i'm working for such a long hours uh, and not only that once you get used to this kind of a lifestyle uh, you cannot enjoy leisure you cannot enjoy a holiday even sundays you cannot enjoy why because uh, uh, when you're highly involved in stressful work uh, you cannot simply sit and watch things that's the problem with people who are stressed out so but there are various ways by which we should learn to consciously cope with this uh, problem called stress so i would uh, give a simple analogy like uh, stress is a necessary evil why do i call it because without stress in other words pressure without pressure we don't do any work that's what we learn from our families we learn from our parents unless parents are after us we will not wake up early in the morning we will not get ready for the day we will not put ourselves into action it's because somebody is driving you so stress is also called uh, some kind of electrical energy it's like i would say it's plain simple electricity let us say now you are like an electric bulb and then uh, unless there is an electrical energy this bulb will not glow so you cannot be glowing in the workplace unless you have some amount of electricity or electrical energy called stress without which it is very very impossible for you to uh, surge ahead put yourself into action now but there's also on, a, on the other side of it how much of uh, electricity or electric uh, electricity or whatever you call the wattage or the volts an electric bulb can withstand in india uh, 230 volts is average electricity and up to 240 or maybe 250 i think 230 to 240 volts a domestic uh, electrical bulb can withstand but if it is beyond 240 250 this bulb will this bulb will glow bright for some time and then it will be burnt out so burnt out or burnout they call it today burnout employee burnout is an outcome of stress so we will see systematically all of these anyway gradually but that's the question in point if electricity is enough or adequate the bulb continues to glow well but when the electricity is fluctuating either the bulb is not properly glowing or it is uh, overglowing and then finally it burns out same analogy is applicable to our lives also our bodies can withstand some amount of stress uh, until it can withstand and start performing but as i told you minimum stress is needed if you want to really perform no stress we will all become lazy so some amount of stress is definitely needed if you really want to put yourself into action but uh, how much is always a big question how much of stress so we say low stress l o w low stress uh low productivity optimum stress higher productivity higher stress again low productivity that's how this concept is to be understood and uh, in statistics uh, we say that stress and productivity uh, are having a curvy linear uh, relationship which means it is neither negative nor positive it's partly negative partly positive as i told you uh, low stress low productivity high stress also low productivity but optimum stress or average stress higher productivities so it's like a bell bell shaped curve uh, on the on the x axis you take uh, let us say stress itself and on the y axis you take productivity so therefore what happens when uh, when the stress levels are low the bar, the graph the curve starts moving and then the productivity is also low and then once the stress starts slowly moving uh, the bell shaped curve and in the center of the bell it is called the optimum amount of stress and then the productivity will be very high but once the stress is increasing towards the right side it's called higher stress the productivity also will be falling down 
that's the beauty of this concept so therefore measuring uh, the relationship between stress and uh, productivity needs uh, a statistical test called co correlation ratio that's a statistical procedure so with that preview slowly we will move into the concept of stress and then uh, we'll also try to understand uh, the first time the concept of stress defined by someone so who's also called the father of stress concept so let's start with this concepts now so there is something called u stress followed by stress itself and then finally it's called distress anybody would know what is called u stress u stress is called a positive stress that means stress that people enjoy even at higher levels that's called u stress we say that beauty lies in the minds of the eyes of the beholder so therefore u stress is in your experience for example someone who is uh, participating in a running race and then uh, before which that somebody is undergoing uh, intense exercises so he is under terrible pressure uh, to increase his bar of performance to raise the bar of performance and then finally what is the objective of that high levels of stress he or she wants to uh, achieve success in that competition so once the competition is achieved it was worth suffering from stress because at the end of the stress you have a pleasant feeling because you have achieved something in life that's the positive side of stress but what if you lose the mark you lost the competition that stress results in distress so therefore your stress could be eustress or it could be distress so with that understanding so what we will do now we will move slowly into the concept of stress it's basically a reaction or it is also called response to a stimulus now what is the stimulus in this because ob is all about stimulus and response of an individual so therefore stress is a reaction to a basic threat so threat is a uh, stimulus when someone is threatening when something is threatening then your reaction is called stress so stress is a reaction to a basic threat and the basic threat is the perceived inability to cope so threat we can even we can even define what is called threat threat is defined as your inability to cope with uh, a situation so stress is a reaction to a basic threat which is an inability to cope with the realities or work situations now the reaction to stress is very very peculiar because we don't uh, experience it in the same way <coughs> excuse me like for example <coughs> i work 16 hours a day which is happening for long years now almost 30 plus years i'm working in the same style and uh, that's what people say that you don't show stress you don't show that you are exhausted how do you get this energy you will be speaking long day all day long you will be speaking you will be speaking hours and hours and then you are running around so many places you will attend so many meetings but still why you don't show that uh, exhaustive exhausted nature why won't you show that you are tired so it comes from the practice unless you practice it uh, yeah you learn from so much of information either uh, you learn from secular literature or you learn from your uh, uh, religious literature all these literatures you should know which one is really working i think in my case religious literature is working more than the secular literature in your case it really secular literature may work more than religious or you may not have access to any religious literature so what i mean is beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder stress lies in the minds of the recipient so as i told you for a sportsman uh, it is you stress because he enjoys being under stress so i always consider uh, it in my sense though i am not a sportsman but i always enjoy stress because i work too much get exhausted but i know i have achieved something so that's called you stress and what is stress to me may not be stress to you that's why it's called unique experience somebody is under pressure somebody is always uh, complaining about it i don't complain i will never complain about stress uh, i will never complain about being workload uh, i only understand that if you are assigned with so many assignments you are learning so many skills that's the positive side of it now <clears throat> as i told you for one person's uh, uh, experience of stress for another person's uh, uh, for another person it could be a pleasure one man it could be a poison for another man it could be a pleasure so stress could be understood in so many ways now uh, it's it should be treated as a perception stress is a perception remember that why because uh, same people are working on the same assignment but somebody is stressed out somebody is not why it's because we perceive it as a uh, a kind of a what i would say under being under pressure under tension so someone else is not under tension but somebody is under tension but in the same workplace same job that they are doing why two different people have different perceptions that's what stress is treated as a perception always 
Now, as I told you, you stress is a positive stress. It occurs when your levels of stress is high enough to motivate you. So you are under motivation because of uh, the positive stress, and then you accomplish great things in life. There is distress. It's a negative stress because when your levels of stress is either too high or too low, and your body or mind begin to respond negatively to those stressors. So the way you respond negatively to uh, the stressors are being under stress. That should be treated as a. That should be defined as distress. So, what stresses you out? There could be various reasons. Like today, we know that money, traffic, job-related aspects like workload, overcrowding, lack of support, lack of training, lack of on-the-job training, uh, audit team. Yeah, it's terrible pressure because since yesterday, I was under this uh, pressure. Uh, some government authorities came. They were inspecting uh, all through the day. Terribly under pressure. Those people were putting so many questions like authorities, and we were struggling, running around. Though we have all the documents, but we were running around to answer them. They always wanted to find some mistake in it. We were not willing to give any mistakes, but they are still trying to find some mistakes, and we were overcoming it. So audit team, whenever it is on the campus, it is terrible stress. So last two days, I think, and from today, so somewhere around five o'clock they left us. So until five o'clock, we were under terrible stress since yesterday. But I'm sure after five o'clock, we have forgotten everything because we have done our job. Now it's up to them, whatever the ranking that they give, whatever the reports that they give. So <clears throat> stress. could be because of health also medical issues also today that is going to be predominant ever since uh, covid 19 uh, there are any any kind of health related aspect any kind of uh, health issue that you suffer from you attribute it either to covid or something else so that's what mental psychologically we call it uh, hypochondria it's a, you you think that you know you are having some kind of a health problem so modern times we are all uh, suffering from what you call hypochondria today so lack of free time is also stressing us out yeah you think that sunday you can sleep well sleep but it doesn't happen in families they ask you to wake up early so sunday afternoon you want to sleep no it doesn't happen because you are not used to sleeping afternoons rest of the weekends so relationships also should be causing stress and uh, which means you know you can have stress from the family or the friends but in 1974 there's a gentleman he was a physiologist by name hans seile selgi hans selgi He wrote a book called Stress Without Distress. That means remove the negative part of it and you enjoy the positive part of it. Convert it into you stress. So he defined stress as G A S, which stands for General Adaptive Syndrome. General Adaptive Syndrome. That means to what extent your body can adapt to the pressures from the environment because environment always imposes pressures on us. Uh, it exerts tremendous amount of pressure on us. So how does your body? adapt to such kind of pressures and function normally so that's what he defines stress as a person's reaction to life events now i have already sent a mail to sri lata hope she had shared it with all of you now there is a checklist of life events if you answer those life events we can demonstrate whether you are really experiencing stress or not so therefore let's define what is stress here it's one's reaction to life events the non specific response of the body to any de- demand made upon it so it's basically the same understanding any pressure that is imposed on your body and how does your body respond to it it may not be specific response uh, you may respond in any way like as i told you i respond in one way others respond in another way like a sportsman responds in one way and non sportsman responds in other responds in another way so the reaction to stress is not one and the same by all of us so general adaptation in adaptation syndrome says it is the extent to which a person may be adapting to uh, the <coughs> pressures that are exerted by an environment in which he or she lives so to how do you get adapted to that that's what is defined as stress if you get adapted it is positive if you are not getting adapted it should be treated as negative stress now some facts some research i wanted to share with you uh, there was one research on ceos and senior executives it was a very big study actually in which they found that heart diseases obesity expected cancers then uh, people are using medicines regularly because of stress and uh, they have that waistline increasing because of stress in fact i have also experienced it quite a long time even if i'm eating only one chapati and just a small bowl of rice still i was uh, putting on weight so stress could have uh, so much of harmful effects on our body uh, today heart diseases are rated very high among ceos and senior executives <laughs> many people are dying because of that being under pressure in their workplaces but there's another interesting uh, uh, research uh, which suggests that wall street uh, employees executives wall street uh, stock exchange uh, uh, study it was they found that the death rates as a result of heart attack 
is 60% higher among them than the national death rate uh, for men between 18 and 65 years of age. It's a very interesting research study. So corporations across the world are spending billions of dollars to help employees cope up with their stress. So I want to present to you a model. It's a very interesting model. You can also write down who proposed this model. Uh, it's uh, proposed by two professors named Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R, -E Parker and Decortis, D-E-C-O-T-T-I-S, or I think D-E-C-O-T-I-S, Decortis, or double T-I-S, -E correct. Parker and Decortis, they have suggested this model, and uh, I have uh, adopted this model for all my training programs or any kind of lectures. Because in this model, they have completely uh, included the stressors and the stress reactions or the outcomes of stress. So you can see here, what are the stressors which cause stress itself? And then what are the outcomes of stress? This is, which is also called secondary level outcomes. So stressors result in first level outcomes, which is called stress itself. And then second level outcomes are uh, from this emanating from the stress. So the relationship between stressors and the secondary level outcomes is indirect, indirect whereas the relationship between stressors and stress is direct. Stress and uh, outcomes of stress are direct. So that's how you have to understand it. And now let's see how stressors, that means as I told you in the previous discussion, stressor is also like electrical energy. It's like the current flow. So stressor should be treated as a current flow. So there's a category of stressors you can see here. First one, what itself is a powerful stressor? So this model is based on a research. So in research, they have proved these relationships. That's why I've adopted it. So anything which goes through research only should be accepted today for our practice. Without research, if you simply accept any theories, you may be failing or you may be losing a lot of money in the implementation of the decisions. So that's what convincing to us. So work itself is the powerful stressor that results in job stress. Then various organizational characteristics. Like as I told you uh, in previous trimester semester also, we would have discussed about the organizational characteristics like uh, uh, formalization. You may be taking some notes, so it will help you. Formalization, like for example, the extent to which there are rules uh, and regulations clearly stated in your company may be causing stress. So first characteristic called formalization. The second one is called standardization, which means uh, your rules and regulations are uniformly applied to all people in the organization. That's what we call standardization. Then the next characteristic is called centralization. To what extent the decision-making authority is uh, centralized or uh, vested with one higher up in the organizational hierarchy. That's what we call centralization. So for everything you have to go and listen to that gentleman, take his or her permission, that could be causing stress. Similarly, if your hierarchy, hierarchy is also another characteristic of the organization. So if the hierarchy is tall, it could be causing more stress because you have to, uh, the information has to go from one layer to the other layer until it reaches the top layer. And then the top layer decision has to be flown to your bottom levels through so many other layers. So it is very, very uh, time consuming and then your waiting time is more. And as a result, you feel stressed out. And there are many more characteristics of organizations. For example, if there is a good climate in your organization, uh, it could reduce stress. But if there is no favorable climate in the organization, uh, I think in maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I'll talk more about climate, culture and things like that. So culture and climate are also characteristics of organization. If you have a very friendly culture, it might reduce stress. But if you have unfriendly cultures, it increases stress. Similarly, if your climate, uh, tomorrow I'll elaborate more on that, climate in the sense, how people feel working in that organization is called climate. So if there is a favorable climate, people in, uh, may not experience negative stress. They enjoy stress in the positive. That's what we call uh, climate. And there are many more characteristics that I will elaborate uh, as we move slowly. So let's look at rules now. What kind of uh, rules uh, people perform could result in stress? For example, if there is a role ambiguity, I am not sure what am I supposed to do. Many times I have this problem. So somehow I figure it out. I'll discuss with some people, uh, hushing up my ego. And then even sometimes I'll ask the young people to let me know more about those roles. So that's how uh, I fight against my stress, stressor in the beginning itself. So role ambiguity, uh, role overload. If you're overloaded with so many roles, then also you're likely to experience stress itself. 
when you are not so clear about your roles that's called role ambiguity you would still be experiencing uh, more stressors resulting in stress then role conflict so if you are trapped between two equally important roles and you have same time both have to be performed which is impossible because we can perform only one role at a time but you are trapped between two equally important roles to be performed in the given time you are definitely under stress now as we move to the next one called relationships so what type of relationships should be causing stressors should be treated as stressors if for example uh, if there is no cohesiveness in your workplace it could cause terrible stress because when there is no cohesiveness people do not have we feeling and when they don't have we feeling naturally it is be terrible stress because in the absence of we feeling people don't share don't cooperate with each other don't look at each other don't freely talk to each other that causes stress and then lack of trust that's what we call interpersonal trust so if there is lack of trust among members that will be causing huge levels of stress well established facts now next one career development if people don't see that uh, they have a career advancement in their workplace they are under terrible pressures not only that so there are various external commitments which are stem from your family right all the responsibilities that you have for the family members may also be causing stress because of the family you compromise many times i stayed back in this in fact i stayed back in this country because of my parents they were already sick they were already getting old so way back in uh, early 90s 89 onwards i wanted to leave this country so three attempts i made unfortunately every time i wanted to move out of this country i had some uh, family challenges like parents suffered from heart attacks and things like that so i had to stay back to be with them to take care of them finally so i've lost all three of them my father mother brother but now i am also getting old slowly closer to 60 so i don't think i can go abroad now so yeah but at the same time i am not discouraged i am not frustrated sometimes uh, i get this feeling that i i wish i had gone there but i encourage all young people to go because uh, i had a, i couldn't go because of certain pressures but when they don't have any pressures they should be going so, so we must encourage young people to go abroad experience the new worlds and then one day come back and then contribute to this great nation so <clears throat> that's what happened i pushed my youngest brother out of this country and then my daughter is also gone so i'm sure more young people would be in the queue for that opportunity one should always try that never settle for small things in life never settle never compromise with small things in life because your life's purpose is much bigger than who you are because your life purpose is for greater cause when would you know that only when you start contributing then you would realize that so many times i realize that people who are running orphanages homes for the aged not easy to see i remember one orphanage i was associated with there were something like 28 girl children and a couple uh, dedicated to take care of this orphanage i realized treating one child or taking care of one child or two children in our families we are struggling but those couple were taking care of 28 children so i used to support them in many respects uh, it's not easy taking care of 28 girl children that too the girl children needs more protection so lot of struggling i have noticed them <clears throat> so we always have this kind of stress uh, stressors they are all categorically so you can see that one uh, the first one is organizational stressors the second one is role stressors the third one is relationship related stressors the fourth one is career related stressors and the fifth one is stressors which are outside of your workplace maybe family and friendship and so on community and so on so they are all called stressors so all of them like electrical uh, cables they are connected to your body and your body is receiving uh, the power supply now that naturally then your body must be functioning very actively but after some time it doesn't function because these stressors are becoming more intense more stronger then what happens your body is not getting adapted to that that's what your general adaptive syndrome uh, is slowly failing and then what happens your second level outcomes you are likely to experience what does it mean if you have a positive job stress you will have positive commitment to the organization but if it is distress your commitment to the organization drastically comes down similarly if you have a positive stress you you are satisfied with your work but if it is a distress in your workplace you are job dissatisfied then if the stress is increasing you try to take you try avoiding taking some decisions avoiding the work avoiding extra challenges avoiding extra assignment that's what we call avoidance behavior 
you can see that when some people are not willing to take any responsibilities they give all lame excuses they are basically avoiding work because they are under terrible stress and then finally stress is known to have its influence on job performance so as i told you uh, the lean in intra, what is it called uh, curvy linear relationship between job stress and productivity the same theory is applicable even to the performance so if you have low job stress low performance if you have moderate job stress optimum performance if it is high job stress you will have low performance of job so in any case low stress high stress results in low job performance but optimum stress results in higher performance that's the interesting part now uh, you can elaborate more on them so here you can see various types of stressors like as i told you job related some we have already talked about like for example work itself so freedom if you do not have freedom adequately in your workplace if you do not have stability that means if you are not given enough time to settle down in your workplace and you are expected to perform uh, immediately then you will suffer from stress today only you joined the new job and then they expect you to start performing then you will be definitely stressed out so that means you have poor stability they didn't give you enough time to settle down that's what we call stability not only that when pay performance limitations are uh, there in your workplace you will definitely stress out i have this problem in my workplace uh, pay is not commensurate with performance in my workplace that is very very unfair i always understand it but top management is blind to those things and many people are suffering and many people are quitting their jobs in spite of that management is least bothered they think that if old people go new people will come but unfortunately there is lack of skills in the new people that they are experiencing now new people are also not able to withstand not even a year they are quitting the jobs at least three people have already quit the jobs in my workplace now task performance sorry task variety we talked about it on motivation class so when there is task variety you may likely to experience a, a optimum level of stress but if the task variety is too much you are supposed to you are you are experiencing more stress then when there is uh, management emphasizing on achievement more than what you are expected to perform naturally you will experience stress then your salary could be causing a stress then uh, the hours of work could be causing stress so you can imagine your base salary base salary is less but you are working more naturally it is stressful you are working more than expected in a week it is stressful and then organization related stressors are called structure as i already told you climate as i already told you but interestingly there is something called communication flow also if there is adequacy of communication then you have less stress but if the communication is not adequate your boss is not communicating adequately you are stressed out then if there is no open communication still you are stressed out so if there is no concern for people you are still stressed out if your management is out of touch with you you are still stressed out now let's look at career related stressors Tra uh, lack of quality training then the basis of promotion is unfair then there is no performance feedback but you are judged based on your performance at the end of the year your promotions are based on performance but you were never given feedback in time then lack of emphasis on individual development causes stress then as i told you relationships at work like lack of trust lack of cohesiveness and lack of support from boss could be causing terrible stress then various role related as i told you role ambiguity role conflict uh, role overload then uh, too much of innovation encouraged bosses encouragement or support if it is lacking bosses task orientation if your boss is a task centered fellow you will experience more stress then uh, when supervision is too close also you are likely to suffer from stress and then uh, you are not given enough tenure in a job that means lack of security it causes stress then tenure in the company also could cause stress both are slightly different then uh, lack of social support or lack of support it, like superiors are not supporting subordinates are not supporting colleagues are not supporting in which case you experience stress then finally how many of us know that your age itself could be causing stress age is a stressor as you are getting older then gender no doubt men and women have different uh, uh, perceptions women experience more stress than men so gender could be sex could be causing stress then number of dependents if you have more dependents in your family you are likely to be stressed out and then less years of education more expectations you suffer from stress so that's how theoretically we identify all the stressors causing stress but what are the outcomes there can be physiological outcomes there can be psychological outcomes and there can be behavioral outcomes so what are physiological outcomes that means something to do with your body they could also be called psychosomatic so uh, it's a well established fact that stress affects your immunity i've seen in many cases if i'm not having adequate sleep i suffer from all kinds of allergies all kinds of uh, health related problems indigestions body aches lot of inflammation takes place inside the body which will not be felt but your brain feels that there is lot of inflammation sometimes i have seen swelling throat throat swelling uh, then uh, uh, nasal drain 
then tears coming out, red eyeness, reddishness. So these are some of the uh, physiological problems I have experienced it because of stress. Some people experience high blood pressure and higher heart attack rates, then tensions, headaches, back pain, of course, uh, gastrointestinal issues, and then even it can, it may even lead to cancer. That's what one of the research studies uh, quoted. Now, what are the psychological problems? Anger, anxiety, depression, nervousness, irritability, tension, and boredom. I'm sure every one of us have these problems. Like when you are stressed out, you express your anger. You throw temper tantrums at others. Then you have anxiety under pressure. Then you experience depression, nervousness, uh, irritability, tension, and boredom. These are some of the psychological issues. But they may also result in poor performance, poor self-esteem, uh, hatred for supervision, uh, lack of concentration, not able to make better decisions, and then dissatisfaction at job. What about behavioral problems? Aggressiveness, absenteeism from work, disinterest in work, under-eating or over-eating. I've seen many people under stress. They eat too fast, too much. And then sleeplessness. For some people, it is sleeplessness. For some others, it is sleepfulness. Some people sleep too much because of stress, but still they don't have uh, that fresh feeling after that. Because it's a stress-induced sleep. And some people are sleepless because uh, stress uh, suppresses certain hormones contributing to sleep. Then uh, behavioral problems also could be smoking or drinking, drug abuse. Uh, you have seen cine actors, cine actresses, they were involved in drugs in the recent time. It's because these guys work too long hours. Sometimes midnights they'll be working. Shooting takes place somewhere early morning, somewhere around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning because they want complete uh, shutdown. When the whole world shut down, these guys start functioning. So unusual timings they will be working so they will have sleeplessness that's why they resort to drug abuse and so on now this is something which i talked about uh, this is called the curvilinear relationship the bell so when stress is low you can see the performance is also low low poor performance but as the stress keeps increasing the bell you can see as it comes to the optimum level which is called population mu when the amount of stress is uh, optimum then the performance is very high you can see and similarly, when the stress starts increasing, the performance is dropping. So it, when it starts increasing, the performance is drastically dropping. This is what we call curvilinear relationship. So it's not only performance. You can put productivity. You can put creativity. You can put decision making. Many things you can keep here. Same relationships can be expected. Very interesting observation it is actually. And theory and this theory has been well accepted and proven through research also. So now we move on to the last one. Then we will come back tomorrow with more discussions on some research which I have conducted on uh, employee stress in hospitals, some government hospitals, some university type like yours, and some private corporate hospital. I have conducted a study years ago, published. I want to share some of those lessons uh, in tomorrow's class. So let's conclude with uh, just brief understanding of what is this coping, and tomorrow we'll see more elaborately what is this concept called coping. It's because tomorrow you are going to experience stress, so this class should be helpful to you because it should help you in the sense uh, you have to adopt some kinds of coping mechanisms. So what is your attempted response to reduce the feeling of discomfort? That's what we call coping. It's an individual's attempted response to reduce the feeling of discomfort. So stress could also be called feelings of discomfort. So how will you do it? Some people smoke, some people take a lot of tea, coffees, some people take alcohol, some people take tobacco products, Yeah, some people take uh, psychotropic drugs. Yeah, Some people resort to many other coping mechanisms. Uh, some people delegate. Some people take the support of others. There can be various ways of coping actually. Uh, some people go on yoga, some people do meditation, some people read books, some people listen to music. There are various ways of it. All that I will try to show you tomorrow with a lot of concreteness. But let's just see one more definition and conclude this topic. Lazarus and Folkman, they, said they define coping is a response to perceived stress and defined as constantly changing cognitive and behavioral efforts so coping should be treated as efforts to manage specific external or internal demands that are appraised as taxing or exceeding the resources of the person. So whenever <clears throat> the stress is increasing, you are learning to cope up with it through your personal efforts. And you try many ways of doing it. One is called cognitive effort. That means you try to think, reason and understand and then efforts. Then you have certain behavioral efforts. Like as I told you, you can take the support of others or you delegate some work to some people or you postpone some, people, some work so that tomorrow you can do it. You can have many ways of uh, uh, coping with that. So, but uh, here we are not talking about the types of coping. The classification coping is a huge list. Various professors have suggested various types of coping mechanisms. Then I'll also talk about something which I'm using 
personally how i cope up with stress all that i will talk about tomorrow so until then i'll stop here if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise we can discontinue the topic